Hi guys, it's Tara Reed. You're watching Joe and Marie all day, all night. YouTube family. Let's go! How you doing guys? Hi. Well, welcome back to another episode of It Didn't Make the Shelf. This is lucky number seven. Lucky, unlucky, I don't know. But I watched 15 titles in the month of July, so this is going to be a review palooza, if you will. And we're going to dive into and review quickly, some not quickly, but all these titles that I watched. The first one I watched is a 2020 movie. I said the year, I'm sorry. The Toll. On Blu-ray. With some nice creepy artwork. I don't want to say too much about it because it was kind of interesting, but basically this woman gets in a car and she's traveling somewhere and they take a wrong turn and everything happens. It does have a special feature, paying the toll man featurette. That's it. There you go. 81 minutes of goodness. I actually gave it a two, but I won't be paying this toll again. Um, I actually watched this with Marie, so I thought it was okay. Like she said, to me, when I watched this, it was like watching the movie Windchill all over again. It was very similar, except Windchill was in the snow. This one wasn't. But pretty much it was the same story, just a little bit different. If you've seen Windchill, you've pretty much seen The Toll. There's, if you like that one, you'll like this one. I've but, seen it, and I can't say that often. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I didn't think this was that great. It's a good one-time watch, but I can't see myself ever rewatching this. I actually give it a two as well. I wouldn't even waste my time with it. You give it the deuce. Yep. <laughs> Alright, the next movie I watched is A Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The Long Haul. And this is the last uh, entry in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies, if you will. This is from 2017. It has a different cast, so it's definitely not as good, in my opinion. Um... I don't need to keep all the Diary of a, of a Wimpy Kid movies, so that's why I'm going to let this one go. But most of the movies are really good. I really enjoyed them. They make you laugh. This one, not so much. I don't really want to say too much if you haven't seen the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. It's basically, it's basically a story about this boy and high school or school and everything that happens with relationships and his family. and It's just a fun, crazy time. I highly rec recommend them. Um, I was definitely happy to check it out, but I won't be keeping it. Special features, uh, making a scene, Greg Hefley's uh, 10 reviews for the perfect road trip, road games, learn to draw. Learn to draw? Is this a how-to? I want a how-to. I want a gag reel. I want deleted scenes. I don't know about you. But anyway, uh, Diary of, oh, Decade of a Wimpy fun. Bloopers and deleted scenes. There you go. Deleted animation. Holland through Georgia. Holland through Georgia. Are, are they driving or are they picking up moving? Well, it's long haul, so they're hauling. <laughs> they're hauling, eh? Okay. Uh, and a gallery. But yeah. Interesting movie. I actually watched this when it first came out. When it first came out, Cinema Sickness actually found this for me. And because I always liked the first three when I heard this one was coming out, I was really excited for it. I had no uh, no early knowings of this film. So when I actually got the film and I put it in and realized that the whole entire... I mean, the whole entire cast is completely different. The mother was a little bit annoying for me. But... Yeah, it was Alicia Silverstone in this one from Clueless. And I just thought this movie was just god-awful. I'm... I'm curious if, you know, if anybody knows, comment down below. But I'm curious is, did the whole cast know this movie was going to be a train wreck and none of them wanted to come back? Or, you know, the studio actually got rid of them and got, you know, new people to do it. It shouldn't have been made. Though. Yeah, this movie should never have been made. The first three are really good. I've Phenomenal. Always, I've Highly always recommend en them. I've always enjoyed them. I've told Marie for the longest time to watch them. And one time... I got it to watch it on a Saturday afternoon, and we pretty much marathoned all three of them. I was hooked. I watched all of them in and like then, a couple days. Yeah, 
I told her, so when you watch this one, you're watching it alone because I do not want to watch it again. That's yep. how bad it is. But yeah, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Long Haul. I only give it a one. And that's really pushing it. I actually thought a little bit more highly of this diary, I guess. I gave it a 2.5 because I was happy to check it out. I somewhat enjoyed it. It's not god awful. I've seen worse for sure. But yeah, just definitely watch the first three. Yeah. I won't be uh, keeping that diary. I'll mm -hmm. share that diary. Oh, yeah. All right, moving right along, keeping this uh, train going. The next movie I watched is The Clinic. Intriguing artwork. This is a 2010 movie. Uh, not going to lie, this movie is definitely intense. The artwork had me sold, so curiosity killed me, and I checked it out. This is actually inspired by true events. I don't want to read the back because I was hooked on watching this this movie it's a piece of work i was trying to choose my words there but it's it's a one-time watch just because it involves mothers there's about five or six mothers in this that go to a clinic and i don't want to say anything else really or why and things happen and there are kills i'm not going to say what or who but there are kills uh and it has a pretty good ending and it had lots of ties at the end. Everything comes together like it's it's like a bunch of ants going to an anthill. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's why that happened. That's why that happened. And it's like, wow. So I thought it was very interesting. Um, so basically, this could be a Christmas movie because this couple left on Christmas Eve. And somewhere in the movie, the song Silent Night plays. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> you filthy animals. <laughs> Keep the change. Um, there's some things that take place in this movie that I'm like, okay, that's not happening. You can't get up and walk and hop a fence after having your abdomen cut open. I would consider this a major surgery because it, it takes weeks for it to heal. Now, now, I'm no genius. I actually had a child of my own, naturally, and you're sore. And I can just imagine how sore you would be with your whole abdomen cut like six or seven inches from having a child. But anyway. Never mind me. Turn the page. <laughs> Again, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but if, if you like weird movies about mothers and clinics and suspense, I say, check this out. Oh, sorry, I forgot to pass along the movie. This movie got, got me hooked on, on watching it. Um, as a mother, I, I don't need don't need to watch this again, let me tell you. I'm all, I'm all set with that. I, I should have just left this movie in the box and sent it to Pam or, or, or something like that. I actually have background, um, a family myself, so this kind of hit home a little bit. And I'm all set with a one-time watch, but I give it a three for what it's worth. And I'll be leaving this clinic behind. Joe? I did not watch this. When uh, I came home, Marie told me pretty much the premise of this movie. She pretty much gave me a, 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 a rundown of it. Mm -hmm. And after I... after This is one of those movies that... I would say you go in blind. Yes, don't, I, went, I went in blind. Don't read the title. Don't see a trailer. Look at the artwork and go. Yeah, just put the movie in and go. And go along for a crazy ride. When Marie pretty much spoiled the movie for me, I was just like... The last 20 minutes, the S hits the fan. Yeah. Everything. When, when Marie spoiled it, I was like, well, I have no reason to watch this now because... <laughs> A lot of the, a lot of key points that would have happened that would have sucked me in. Marie told me them, so it's just like, eh, okay, I, I guess I won't watch that. You then. put it in my box. Yeah, so I was <laughs> just like, yeah, but you could have said, don't read it, just watch it, Joe. It's got content. It's got heavy content. In yeah, it. but Marie decided to tell me what was in it, and after that, I didn't have to watch it. 
<laughs> but hey, it is what it is. It was pretty good. I got plenty to watch. So. I gave it a three. I thought I it was know. pretty good. This but, I I might keep, but for the content, no. But yeah, the clinic. All right, our next movie, number four, is a Dollar Tree special. This one is Truth or Dare. Do the dare or the dare does you. Dollar Tree special. I don't want to read the back on this one, but basically uh, a Halloween weekend, there's a haunted house and there's a group playing a Truth or Dare game. And there's some gory scenes. They're obviously uh, dared to do something or um, made or asked to tell the truth. Hence the game Truth or Dare. S spoiler. No spoiler. <laughs> no spoiler. It's truth or Dare. But um, this is definitely not a bad watch. Um, pretty good. But it's it's a one time watch for me. What'd you give it? I gave it a three. Yeah, same thing. I saw Absolute Sublime have this in his collection, and um, because of that. Like I said, I never even knew about this film. And then one day we saw it. On the last wave we saw it at Dollar Tree. I decided to pick it up. And it's similar to the other Truth of Dale movie that came out a couple of years ago. But actually, this one is actually better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I liked the, the premise of this one. I thought it was really good. It was a lot less CGI than the other Truth of Dale. This one had a lot more practical in it. Um, I really enjoyed it. But again... To me, this is only a one-time watch. I probably will never watch this again. It def uh, it definitely kept me watching, though. Yeah. If I had a... As I've said before in these videos, if I had a smaller collection, I would probably keep this because I would probably mm -hmm. rewatch it. But with the amount that I have to watch, it'll it'll be decades before I, I, I put this back you in. You can let it go. Yeah. So, I'd rather let this one go to somebody else. I stole your line. I know. I'm sorry. But, yeah. Truth to dare. All right, this next movie is actually a rewatch. Surprise. It is from 2016, 2006. Look at your notes, girl. Uh, it is Friends with Money. Uh, it has Jennifer Aniston in it, and I actually like her. So I'll, I'll like watch anything with her in it. Um, I don't want to read the back on this, but it's basically a bunch of couples with money and the problems and they have kids and it's just a eh, it's an okay watch relationships your kids um are you donating to this foundation how much do you make there there wasn't a whole lot of story uh jennifer aniston is basically uh, a maid and she cleans the houses and all that stuff and there are other couples that um make more money doing other stuff Spoiler, sorry. That's basically the movie. That's why you're here, right? But um, special features on this one include behind-the-scenes featurette, uh, Sundance featurette. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. I didn't check it out. I was just done with this movie. It was kind of boring, if you will. It was just mediocre. We'll use that word. Los Angeles premiere featurette, audio commentary with the writer, director, uh, Nicole... <laughs> I can I can never say the name Nicole again if you've been watching our videos. You know why. Nicole <laughs> Helicopter. And producer Anthony Bergman. Mm, special features, not rated. Okay. Friends with money. I actually uh, thought it was cute. It had a nice story. It's a bunch of young girls. Um... Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, average couple, young couple. I said young girls. I mean, young couples. What'd you give it? Uh, I gave it a two. I gave it a deuce. Deuce. This movie, I did not watch. Looking, I watched it twice, so you're all set. Yeah, looking at it, it reminded me of that movie. Um, just by the cover, it reminded me of that movie, Joy Luck Club, that came out years ago. And that movie I watched, and it's it just seemed like it neandered. Yes, that's the word for this. It meandered. Sorry, I said neander like Neanderthal, but it meandered. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Sorry, but uh, it just it couldn't. Didn't that, hook me in. Yeah, 
it was just a, a slow story. So this one, looking at it, it seemed like it was going to be something similar. So I just, I wasn't interested in this. Mm. So I stayed away from it. But yeah, friends with money. All right, we're almost halfway there. This next movie is kind of a fun one. It's an American Girl movie. Yeah, I watch kids' movies, whatever. I pretty much watch anything. He doesn't like kids' movies. <laughs> kind of makes him sleepy. Yeah, it does. This next movie is from 2013, and it is and it is Sage Paints the Sky. With a little hollow foil. I don't know if you can see it. Hollow foil. Hello, foil. Uh, this movie is about perseverance, believing in yourself, and working together. Uh, this is great for young girls. It has a cute story. It, it's a lot of fun if you're like, you know, a teenager. But I'm curious, and I like movies like this. I have, I'll have i watch anything. It's about saving the arts in a school and music in a school. It has beautiful hot air balloon scenes at the end, so spoiler on that. I actually enjoyed watching the scenery in this movie. Uh, there's her riding on a horse. There's a lot of pretty scenes in here, but it's basically about uh, teaming up with people and helping each other out. And she's an artist and she wants the arts back in the school. And her other friends want music back in the school. So they team up and they work it out. It's a nice little heartwarming story. But in the end, it's a one-time watch. I give it a, a two. I, again... Did not see this movie. That's totally not up your alley. No, this is totally, <laughs> totally not up my alley. No. I had no interest in this whatsoever. I got this from Marie. There was no way in hell I was going to watch this. It was cute. But, yeah, this is all her. All right, lucky number seven now. Not so lucky because I didn't really like it. Spoiler. Mm, not spoiler. But the next movie I watched is The New Girlfriend. I wasn't yawning through it, I'll tell you that much. It was kind of suspenseful. And this is from 1999, and I'm going to show you the artwork, and you're going to know why. Suspenseful. Creepy. Uh-huh. Anyway. There's a lot of special features in here. Uh, letterbox featurette, surround sound, deleted scenes. I checked out the deleted scenes. Um, I believe that they were just in black and white, and it wasn't really a deleted scene. Didn't really have anything to do with the movie. And I literally watched like a minute of it. And I said, pass all day. And I took it out. I'm good. Uh, there's a trailer. And there's Spanish subtitles. And there's animated menus. With special features like that, you have to have it in I was going to say, don't get excited. <laughs> but it's provocative and unsettling. Give her what she wants. I don't need to read this one. Because there's some content in here. Um... It's a hard concept. Um, I don't want to go into detail, but it involves adult content, we'll say. What'd you give it? It's a sad ending. That's why I don't want to keep it. But I gave it a two because it kept me watching. It does. It has a sad ending, and it's it's a harsh concept. To you know, it's a sensitive subject, if you will. Yeah. Um. I saw this movie, but I probably saw this when I first bought it almost like seven, eight years ago. Oh, wow. So I really, really don't remember this film. I remember watching it. I remember thinking it was me. And I kept it on my shelf as in one day I'll rewatch it. But when I started making room, I, I pretty much said, well, I haven't watched it in this long. I'm just going to throw it in Marie's It Doesn't Make the Shelf Boxes. She checked it out, but me, like I said, when I watched it, I was just like, I thought it was all right, but it was nothing to write home about. Like I said, I don't remember much of this movie. The story is kind of slow in the beginning, and then it heats up, and things happen, and it's a, it's a touchy subject, and and then the end happens. Yeah, but I wrote pretty much cannot even give this a rating, because I can't remember the movie well enough to rate it. But yeah. I gave it a two. One to me, one to you. The new girl. Friend. Yeah, the new girlfriend. <laughs> All right, we got another American girl title for you. A kitty title, if you will. 
he bought it for me, thinking that I would watch it and like it. I was happy to check it out once, and I watched it, so I thank you, because Lee to the Rescue is not his bag. But look at the slip. Not at all. Anyway. Um, this is about a girl's adventure to find her brother and save animals. Now, I'm all about animals. I love animals. As you can see, we got pillows back here. But it does have a few subtitles, and I actually enjoyed it. It's, it's a cute story. She actually meets this girl and becomes friends with her, and they go on their adventure to try and find her brother. That's it. Simple. It's for young girls. Oh, you give it? I give it a two. Oh, a one-time watch. I give it nothing just because I didn't watch it. Again, not my bag like the last one. So I had no interest in this. I'll never watch it. They basically go to the Amazon and you see uh, the jungle and all the animals. animals and stuff that takes place. Let me see if there's any special features that I missed for you. Let's see. Uh, DVD bonus and Blu-ray. Blu-ray and DVD bonus. Um, Born for Adventure, Meet Lee Clark, Star Power, Meet the Cast, Welcome to the Rainforest, A Day on the Set, uh, Adventure Collections, Creating Lee's Style, so her wardrobe, basically. So if you if you want to get her look, there you go. Uh, how, how We Did It, Animatronics in the uh, Amazon. So yeah, some of these animals aren't really real. Like this sloth that comes at the end, he, you can clearly see that he's or she is uh, not a real sloth, but they did such a good job. I, I, I actually like that. I like all the animals. But yeah. I'm all set with it. I was happy to check it out. But, I like the adventure story. Yeah, but Leah to the rescue. I got nothing for it. All right, this next movie I'm going to share with you has got some more content to it. It's called Thanks for Sharing. It's actually about uh, sex addicts and going to uh, a, a, a course. Yeah, I was going to say course. Going to counseling. So the sex addicts going to counseling and relationships. So it's about these three people. Now, I wanted to watch this for the cast with Mark Ruffalo and Gwyneth Paltrow, Josh Gad, jo, uh, Jolie, Jo. Jo Lee. Jolie. I can't read. <laughs> Richardson and Al Alicia Moore and Tim Robbins. And Alicia M Moore is pretty much pink. <laughs> yeah. Alicia M uh, Moore is pretty much pink, the singer. Oh, yes. That's her name I was trying to. Anyway, I was trying to say that name the other day. But yeah, great cast. Uh, it's got a lot of special features, like a boatload. Hop in. Here we go. Uh, deleted and extended scenes. I actually watched those. They were pretty good. They weren't in black and white. Not bad. Uh, one step at a time. Making. Thanks for sharing. Featurette. A gag reel. I watched some of that too. It was eh. I, I was happy with it. I like Mark, Mark Ruffalo and Gwyneth Paltrow. Commentary with the writer-director. Uh, Stuart Blumberg. And the writer, Matt Winston. Widescreen pres presentation. Uh, Dolby Atmos, English, and Spanish subtitles. I was happy to check that out. I was very intrigued. Adult content, again, uh, I got a few laughs. I actually enjoyed it, but honestly, I don't need it. I, I don't need this whole, it's all about sex counseling. <laughs> it it's a fun shut off your brain movie if you want to get interested in, in that. I gave it a three. So I'm going to share this one, or as Joe says, hey, Joe. Yeah. Uh, again, I never saw this. So, you know, like I said, I, it wasn't something I was super interested in. It's one of those, I have to be in the right type of mood to watch it. I, and since I've owned it, again, over seven years, I've never been in the mood to watch it. So I'm just going to let it go. But, hey. Mm. You didn't miss too much. It's it's nothing to write home about. Yeah. But thanks for sharing. You're welcome. All right. This next movie is The Tourist with Angelina Jolie and uh, Johnny Depp. And it is set in Paris. Let me give the back a little read. Um, 
a mild-mannered American on vacation in Venice, Italy. Wait, I said Paris. Oh, secretly I want it to be Paris, okay? I'm sorry. So they're in Venice, Italy, and um, Johnny Depp is bef befriended by Angelina Jolie and the breathtaking beauty of a woman with a mysterious secret, and soon their playful romantic diligence turns into a complicated web of dangerous deceit as they are chased by Interpol, the Italian police, and the Russian men in this, uh, the Russian hitmen in this suspense-filled international action thriller. So basically, she's covering up for her actual husband, so she needs to go on a train and find a dude that looks like her husband and get him to take the rap for her husband that stole a boatload of money. Spoiler. And there you go. The Tourist. I was happy to check it out. Uh, it does have some special features on it. It's got an outtake reel. Let's see. Alternate animated title sequence. Director commentary. A gala affair. And bringing glamour back. She's not bringing sexy back, but yeah. No. She had nice style in there. I, I appreciated it. It is subtitled, so it's a little bit of a read. But it reads easy. It's action-packed. It's, it's got a good story. It kept me watching. I like the ending on this one. I gave it a three. It's a nice story. But do I need to watch it again? No. I already know what happens. I probably already told you too much. The uh, tourist, somebody at work just gave me this recently. For free. He came over uh, to me with like a handful of movies and said, Hey, you interested in any of these? This is the only one I grabbed. And Marie watched it the next day. And I was just like, it's, it's something I grabbed for her to check out. But it was, again, I've never bought in this movie before because I was never interested in it. But I, it's something I was going to just stay detoured away from. But yeah. So I have no rating for this one. It kept me thinking. I liked it. I liked watching the story unfold and knowing what was going to happen with um, the secret plan. They they had a note and then the note burned and they got to figure out what they're going to do. Trying to figure what happens. Go figure. Yeah. But <laughs> the tourist. All right. This next movie. This is a treat for Joe. Actually not. He's going to want to look away. Shield your eyes. Sex movie has been. I was just uh, curious. Where Willard ended, Ben me. Where Willard ended, where Willard ended, Ben begins. And this time, he's not alone. So he's basically a rat. This is from 1972. Uh, when Detective Sergeant... Cliff Kirkland uh, investigates a horrifying murder of Willard Stiles uh, by a band of rats. He discovers that the rats are now an organized army, and he must destroy the murderous rodents before it is too late. But the rats, led by Ben, the only survivor of the Willard attack, uh, take the challenge with full force and little fear. So basically, all these rats are overrunning this town, and they eventually kill people. It's not too gory at all. I was happy for that, but I can't stand looking at these rodents' noses. And I'm refraining from holding this up so he doesn't have to see it on the video. I, I'm, I'm thoughtful, just like I don't like clowns. You know that. Yeah. But anyway, it's about this boy's relationship with a rat. And some people think that it's imaginary. And then later on, when things start happening and grocery stores are getting trashed and they're like, there's way too many rodents here. What's going on? And he's like, oh, it's actually not imaginary. Well, look at that. But this boy really likes this rat, and the rat's name is Ben. Uh, people think the boy's um, rat is like vermin, and they're like, it's not a friend. Why do you, why do you like it? Um he even made up a song for his little friend, Ben, which was rather creepy because the song went along with a, a marionette. It, it's a puppet on a, it's one of those strings. It's with a marionette. A, yeah, I thought it was, but yeah. 
There's a scene with him holding a marionette puppet singing the song and the little rat is on the stool staring at him, actually looking at him as if he understands what he's saying and watching the rat marionette. He made a, he made a rat marionette and he's singing, dancing on a stage that he made and it's very creepy. So there's that scene for you to visualize. I was curious. It did have a great story. I was happy to check it out once and that's all it's good for. And it does have some lovely special features. New audio commentary and an interview with actor Lee. Um, theatrical trailer and a TV spot, radio spot, and a still gallery. I don't need to see rap still, but there you go. Well, Ben, again, had never bought this movie because I hate, hate rats. Any movie with rats, I stay away from like the play. I love creature features. But rats is where I draw the line. I will not watch any movie with rats. They completely freak me out. So I have zero interest in watching this. I thought this was going to be gory. Like more gory than it actually was. Because it came out in 72. It's in not 72, that bad. 72, the movies weren't that gory. They don't show too much of the gore. It's hardly nothing. It's mostly the concept of it. Yeah. And I, I didn't enjoy seeing their faces up close. The way of rat or a mouse's nose, is, nose twitch, but it had a great story, so I, I was hooked on it for that, and I liked it, but I, I could totally do without that marionette scene and that creepy song and that scene, but um, yeah, I don't need to keep describing. I give it a two, and he gives it like a I give it zero, a, zero, yeah. zero. I give it Nothing. no rating just because I haven't seen it. I never want to watch it, yeah. but I know there are some fans of this movie, but I'm not one of them. It does have a good story, so if you want to check out a good story and you don't mind rats, it's pretty good. Alright, this next one, you're in for a real treat. I actually saw this in someone's uh, for sale pile, and I only saw the spine, so I blind, I blind bought something. And it said, Season's Greetings in green. They had me at Season's Greetings. Had me at Season's Greetings. Christmas. I'm like, yes, Blu-ray. Buy it. Season's Greetings. Sold. I was happy. I'm like, oh, Christmas movie. Shout out to Zach Dahlia if you're watching. This is your movie. And it didn't make the shelf. Spoiler. But um, I'm going to give you a peek at the artwork here. I'd like to point out the ornament, by the way. In case you're looking at the lady the entire time. But it's Christmas Eve in the sleepy town of Brookhaven, Ohio. The decorations have been hung with care. Many families gather together celebrating the joy of the holiday season. While they're together keeping warm and sipping eggnog. I loved eggnog. Much darker things are happening around them. Adultery, disrespect, malice, and demons. Yes, that's all in there. I've seen it. Uh, Season's Greeting is, is a wicked new anthology from the minds who brought you Midsummer uh, Nightmares. Blood and uh, Ladies' Night, Elves, and The Sleeping Soul, featuring four brand new short stories, Oh Christmas Tree, um, along with uh, continuous concepts of media's classic shorts, Elves 2, Ladies' Night, uh, Before Christmas, and the next chapter of Summon, Unholy Night. So pull up a chair and get settled in for this season of murder and mayhem I, I had to read the back on that one but yeah he'll hold up the artwork again <laughs> um yeah so i only saw the spine i should really look more closely at a movie before i buy it it's an anthology if that's what they want to call it no discard it's just plain white with green season's greetings on it um while they were um, rolling the beginning, there was a pointless story. So you're watching credits play over the first story. Now, after the whole movie was done, that's when I finally realized, oh, that's a small story right there. It was literally three minutes, by the way, the opening one. I, ha I actually had to read the back and find out there was actually four stories. They just kind of molded and bled together. And then you move into a crazy elf death scene. And a couple other scenes that I mentioned on there. It's 
not not too long but it's it's a little crazy and for that i don't need to see it again um yep killer killer elf doll a demon lady and of course um there's a body part in there that gets cut off as you saw on the artwork if you're looking at other things besides the lady on the cover you know what i'm talking about i'm not gonna say the word but dick yeah did i say dick um yeah i i tried to figure out where the, the next story started and it, it just didn't make too much sense to me it's just a lot of death and it's around christmas time my favorite one was if i had to choose a favorite if that's a thing i i enjoyed the elf one the, the second one it, it had the most fun and uh held my attention the most made the most sense but yeah a pointless story if, if you're uh into a bunch of weird stuff and death and some girls and a little bit of holiday spirit i gave it a 0. 0.5 definitely definitely not worth my time and i gave it a 0. 0.5 just because of the artwork that's it again i have not seen this one now i'm starting to sound like marie in our other videos i haven't seen it is my i haven't seen it quote line but yeah I was going to wait till Christmas time to see it. Marie decided to do a Christmas in July, so I didn't get to watch this one. But, yeah. You shouldn't watch it. Yeah. We're going to let this one go and let it go to somebody else. Definitely. Definitely don't need it. But I'm, I'm sorry. Not sorry. All right. We're almost there. This next movie is Cake Eaters from 2007. There's no cake on the front. No. There's no cake. Don't eat cake. But, um, Kristen Stewart, Aaron Sanford, Bruce Dern, uh, Elizabeth Ashley. Not, not bad cast, but basically, um, it's about a diseased girl that's sick and she wants to lose her V-card. There's not much on the back. It's basically a story of a family and the mother is an artist. Nothing huge. Uh, almost forgot. Bonus features. Director's commentary. Cast interviews. Exclusive behind-the-scenes footage. Deleted scenes and Spanish subtitles. Cake eaters. It was just a very boring story for me. It was, it was kind of a hard watch. And after 20 minutes, I was sorry that I put this in. I wanted to take it out. Um, spoiler! There is not any cake eating. There is no cake on the table. There is no cake sighting anywhere within this movie. Not cake eaters. Very disappointed. And I like chocolate cake. If I could eat chocolate cake. I can make chocolate cake that my stomach can digest. But anyway. There's no mention of cake. Or eating cake. Or having cake. Or buying cake. Cake eaters. Well, why didn't they call it? This is the story of a girl. Or a girl's story. There's no cake whatsoever in this movie. None. So cake eaters. What'd you give it? I gave it a... Where is my rating? I gave it a one because of the cast. Uh, This one... It's I, a lying title. I wanted to see cake. This one, I'd never seen it. I got this back at a closing blockbuster. Probably in 2010. So probably like 10 years ago. And to this day, I've never watched it. So, therefore, if I haven't watched it this long, it's just going to go. I'm not going to waste my time watching it. It was one of those blind buys because of a closing Walmart. So, nothing uh, not like Walmart, my, best, uh, Blockbuster. Nothing like my last blind buy. Yeah. But, yeah, Cake Eaters. The title lies. It's just about a girl. It's bland. It's boring. She has a relationship with a guy. Done. Woo. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't even eat cake after. I know. Cake eaters. Bye-bye. All right, moving right along. This next movie, it's in a snapper, and it is Wishcraft. In this school, when you're marked absent, you won't be coming back. School will be out forever. That's a nice apple. I really like the artwork in that apple. Yeah. 
Uh, let me read the back for you. I thought this was pretty good. When Brett receives a mysterious gift that grants the owner three wishes, he discovers what dreams can come true with a vengeance. And Little Wish Fulfillment, the school's most popular cheerleader, Samantha, has become Brett's date and he can't wait. But bad timing, someone is slaughtering the rebels, the jocks and the cheerleaders, and Samantha is the killer's next target. She's the perfect victim for a killer in search of perfection. And the only thing that can save her life is wishcraft. Uh, spoiler. The uh, mysterious gift is a bull's dick. Yeah, dick. There's a lot of dick in this review, I guess. It's a running theme, I guess. <laughs> I'm attracted to these movies. Uh, but anyway, they, they just find me. Special features uh, are on here. They are basically chapters, so you can jump chapters. Okay, that's a special feature. Cast and crew bios, audio, and subtitles. I like this movie. It's not that bad. Have you seen it? No. Look at that apple. I know. It's great artwork. I would blow up this artwork and hang it up. It's good. But I've never seen it. But I liked it. It's pretty yeah. good. What'd you give it? Uh, it was a good story, and I didn't need to keep it, but I'd say check it out. I gave it a three. Check it out. Yeah. I've never seen it, so. If you don't mind bull dicks. Yeah. Wishcraft. All right, this last movie I wanted to throw in to make it a nice even 15. The most movies that didn't make the shelf in a month. We broke a record here, and it is Smother, a Dollar Tree special from 2008. Diane Keaton, Dax Shepard, and Liv Tyler. Pretty good cast, I'd say. I was like, yeah, check it out. I asked him to pick this up in Dollar Tree for me. Yep. Now we're sending it back. But roommate, co-worker, mother, nightmare. So basically, uh, this overbearing, crazy mother moves into her son's house while her son is trying to start a family of his own. And he basically gets a job at the same place he's working at. And it's just a lot of relationship and fun content. Um, it's very entertaining. Uh, there were some good lines in here. And I actually liked it. But not good enough to keep it. It was like teetering on the edge. It wasn't like nothing amazing. But it was good. It was a good one-time watch. For me, and uh, I'm going to be moving this one out. I gave it a 2.5. Again, never seen it. Not my type of movie. I'm not a big comedy person, especially newer comedies. I stay away from like the play. They're not as good as ones from the 80s. They don't have any kind of heart or soul like they did back then. So it was something I never wanted to watch. Marie wanted it. I got it for her. So, yeah. Smother. Hi. That is the last title in the It Didn't Make the Shelf video. Like Marie said, there was 15 titles here. That's some, a lot. Some decent, some meh, and some kind of bad. Wishcraft but, was good. Yeah. Wishcraft is one of the ones that I hold higher up. You want to give them a It Didn't Make the Shelf elevator? Yeah, I will. They're waiting for it, I think. But these are all the ones that we just, well, that Marie talked about. Yeah. Here we go. We could change it to wah, 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 wah. No. Okay. <laughs> but those are all the titles, like I said, that Marie watched for the end of the month. And, uh, so now they're just going to go into a box to go bye-bye. If anybody's interested. Yeah, but if you're still watching. Yeah. If anybody's interested in any of these titles, you know, in my in the description down below will be both of our Instagrams as well as my email. You know, message me and let me know, you know, if you want any of these and we'll do some wheeling and dealing, you know. You don't have to buy, uh, buy Season's Greetings with just seeing the spine. Exactly. <laughs> you actually know what the artwork looks like. But, you know, if you're not interested, 
it's okay. okay. We have other places we can get rid of it. But if you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hey, videos before and after. We have other content. If uh, you want to subscribe to us, hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell, and we'll have more videos for you. If you want to leave a comment down below about any of these movies, start typing away. That's maybe, a lot. Maybe you've seen some of these. Maybe you think differently than Marie did or I did with some of these titles. But until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.